Hey guys, so Canon released some new interesting information about the EOS R5. So let's talk about that. This camera is shaping out to be almost a perfect mirrorless camera and all the info we're getting seems to be very promising. I also want to share my thoughts on the newly announced specs and what I would like to be included in order for me to buy this camera. Okay, so the big one is of course the internal 8K up to 30 frames raw video recording using the full width of the sensor. This is the big selling point of this camera and the feature that makes it stand out from the rest of the mirrorless market. Personally, for the majority of my work, which is weddings and social media videos, I don't need 8K. But say for a film or commercial, I could definitely see that being used. That would be great for a reframe. Honestly, I don't think any of my clients will be asking for 8K anytime soon. In fact, most of them are happy with just a 1080p file. But nevertheless, it's a welcomed addition. To record in 8K though, I think it's gonna be expensive. I believe that the RAW files will be recorded on the CF Express cards and additionally, I think the file sizes will be huge. Just like the 1DX Mark III for example. So on the 1DX Mark III with a 512GB card that costs $600, you can record around 36 minutes of 24p RAW footage and that number goes down to 26 minutes for 60p. If this is the same on the R5, this pretty much means that if the RAW feature is what you want out of this camera, then you have to consider the price for the total investment, including CF Express cards. CF Express cards are very expensive at the moment, it's gonna take a couple of years for them to drop in price. Personally, I would not want to shoot RAW all day with this camera, at least for my budget, it doesn't seem plausible. And for documentary work and long form recording, I would avoid using RAW with this camera, but only use it for short clips, for commercials or specifically for gimbal shots. I also have another question regarding the 8K. Firstly, I don't think the R5 will record more than half an hour of video, so as to separate it from Canon's cinema line. But how much can it record in 8K RAW? Will it be able to do 30 minutes? Or will it be something along the lines of 5 to 10 minutes? Now, overheating might be an issue here. The R5 will also be able to film 8K at 30 frames per second, 4 to 2 10 bit, which once again I think will have a large file size, but will be more manageable than RAW, for example. Next, a feature that I'm eagerly waiting for is the internal 4K 120p at 4 to 2 10 bit, which is simply amazing. I use 120 frames mostly at weddings. The camera I use for that is mainly the GH5S, as my Canon C200 does not do 120fps slow motion very well. I mostly use it with Vlog or C-Log to have as much dynamic range as possible, so 10-bit is necessary for me. And while I do manage to get great results with 8-bit files, when I compare it to the rest of my footage, they don't have the same amazing colors. And at times you can see banding or artifacts. The biggest difference is the colors though. I'm addicted to 10 bit, it's a manageable bit depth that keeps all the information when shooting in a log profile and when you grade it just looks like eye candy. Recently I've started to avoid filming super slow mo with a log profile due to this and just use a baked in profile overall, but the difference in dynamic range is apparent. So hopefully this feature on the R5 will help me change that. I was hoping that they would improve the 120 FPS on the Canon C200 but unfortunately they didn't, so I need a better slow motion camera for weddings. I hope there is no line skipping and pixel binning in this mode. 120p 10-bit is just crazy, so it remains to be seen how they achieve that. Canon mentions that the dual pixel autofocus is available in all 8K and 4K recording modes, so that's amazing. For example, the C200 does not have AF while shooting 120 FPS. One of the most requested features for filmmakers is 4K 60p recording. What I'm reading from the Canon website is this. 4K internal video recording up to 119.88 FPS in 4 to 2 10-bit Canon log. They don't specifically mention 4K 60, but on dpreview.com they list 4K 60 in the specs. 
There is also mention of external recording up to 60p through HDMI and all of this is stated to be using the full width of the sensor which was everything we've been waiting for. So spec wise at least it seems that it's close to being the perfect camera. There's of course the Panasonic S1H that records in 4K 16 10 bit but lacks the Canon dual pixel autofocus and I would not use its autofocus for professional work. When I want constant AF, the Canon cameras have the best autofocus in my opinion. The Sony a7 III has a dependable autofocus as well, but I still prefer the Canon one. It doesn't feel as organic as and as natural as the Canon cameras. It looks more artificial to my eye. For gimbal work, I've used the GH5S multiple times on a gimbal with manual focus. And while I can focus manually, it means taking one hand off the gimbal, which destabilizes it a bit, and trying to figure out focus while moving, which is a lot slower and more tiresome. So the R5 would be a great camera for gimbal work. Another feature is dual card slots. But I've yet to understand if this also means backup recording for video, and if it does, what formats can be recorded. For example, if I record RAW and proxy files, I can edit the proxy files on a slower computer and then connect the original RAW files to export. Can I have redundancy recording when filming a wedding? Like I can on the Sony A7 III and GH5S for example? If so, up to what resolution? This is a very important feature for me and I remain a bit skeptic if this feature will be included. Even a 1080p backup recording is going to be a welcomed feature. The card slots take different cards, a CF Express and an SD UHS-2. The CF Express cards though are quite expensive and as mentioned, if the file sizes are as big as the ones coming out the 1DX Mark III, then the cost for multiple of those is going to drastically increase the cost of your investment. Additionally, if you want to edit these files in real time, you'll need a beast of a computer. But you can of course implement a proxy workflow and edit them with ease as long as you have enough space on your hard drives. But this might mean that you have to leave your computer overnight to export all those proxies. The next big feature, which is a first for Canon, is the 5-axis in-body image stabilizer that works together with the optical IS found both in its RF and DF lenses. This is amazing, and if it works as well as the S1H, for example, I'm gonna be blown away. With the S1H and the GH5, this is one of their strong points and selling points. There are times where you don't even need to use a gimbal. Their stabilization is that smooth. So, if this feature works well, I think it will be truly revolutionary for Canon and a great feature to have alongside dual pixel autofocus. A few more features are that it has a flip out screen that a lot of people want. And of course, a great feature is the Canon RF to EF adapter that uses internal ND filters. To me, this is a seriously underrated piece of equipment. I'm working with screw-on NDs all the time and they are not convenient at all for fast-paced shoots like weddings, for example. Now, a price has yet to be announced and Canon seems to be targeting consumers and prosumers. I think the direct competitor at the moment is the S1H, so I think that's the target segment for the R5 and will probably be around $4,000. In a way, the R5 seems to add spec a lot of cameras that are on the high end of the spectrum, so the price still remains to be seen. A Canon R6 will also be released with lower specs and a lower price, so I'm also waiting on that to see how they compare. So what would I want in order to buy this camera? First and foremost, I want dual backup recording. When capturing live events like weddings, to me it's critical to have a backup if one card fails. I never use a camera that doesn't have this option for work like this. So this is the number one most important feature I want out of this camera. Second is no line skipping. I avoid any camera that works this way and doesn't use the full sensor information. And third is dynamic range. I've used the 5D Mark IV on a lot of shoots and was always disappointed with the dynamic range of the video, with a lot of blown out highlights. So, from what I've seen, the 1DX Mark III has excellent dynamic range. Not as much as the C200, but still pretty great. So I hope the R5 will be in a similar ballpark. So, these are the necessary features in order for me to purchase this camera. Everything else is simply a bonus and great to have. What features would you want in order to buy this camera? 
what are the top features that are most important in your line of work? I'm wondering, are some of the features too good to be true? Let me know in the comments below. I think this camera has the potential to be the perfect mirrorless camera and could possibly destroy the competition when it comes out. At the very least, this camera will be a positive release for our industry as it will force other competitors to up their game. And this way, we get better features with better prices. So that was it guys. If you liked this video, please click a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks and see you in the next one.